Well, friends, hello everyone. Someday we will perhaps learn to start our broadcasts on time, but from this, from the fact that we sometimes stay late, they do not become less interesting just to launch. One seemingly simple live broadcast works quite well. A lot of people, and in general a live broadcast is like this, probably one of the most difficult genres that does not, forgives no mistakes anywhere. But still, we are live with you at this moment, and I know that some of you... They were sitting and waiting for the broadcast to start. Someone was there. I left, so I kindly ask for your support, please, those who are here. Right now, be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends, family, and colleagues. Don't forget that a lot indeed depends on your activity. Well, and maybe, potentially, somewhere in the chats with their other investors. Please leave a link for familiar partners so that they can return to it. The broadcast. If they may have already gotten busy with their own affairs. Yes, I am checking everything. We are on air. All set. We are fine. Well, today is Thursday, and as you might be aware, on Thursday we will share news with you, and we talk about technical topics. We talk about, about the project Next Generation Airships is developing. Well, today we have in the studio a person who, like no one else, certainly and undoubtedly influences how the project develops. Boris Alexandrovich Ischenko, this person too, was with us in the live broadcasts. Well, today we will ask him a few questions. Hello, Boris Alexandrovich. Well, the first question on that topic is how, since we released a video about the Scientific and Technical of the Scientific and Technical Council, which was held last week, we talked about it in more detail as well last Wednesday during one of the broadcasts. But today I would like to ask you in general, what was exactly happening there and what results they may have possibly perhaps reached? The Scientific and Technical Council has already been mentioned earlier, that it was a tumultuous process, discussions took place, many numerous technical issues and problems. As a result, a decision was made by the Scientific and Technical Council, NTS. I literally want to voice it now. First, it is to develop a list of the items to be demonstrated, state-of-the-art, cutting-edge, and advanced and innovative technologies in the development and creation of a small-volume airship. By the way, it has been accepted. The preliminary name for the airship will be NOVA. NOVA is clear. Why too? Because its volume will ultimately be in the end, in the area of 2,000 cubic meters, and therefore it is accepted. The name NOVA, known as highly advanced and cutting edge, and these remarkable innovative technological solutions in the industry will be to be tested both extensively on the airship itself and on the models, and stands, and secondly, it is necessary to develop technical requirements to this airship, the NOVA-2, to further develop their project justification in a more comprehensive and detailed manner. Month end, submit to the Scientific and Technical Council for approval and move forward. The next stage is the development of the sketch project process. Then, as usual, the development of the RCDR is a working design. In the documentation, this is already the issuance of tasks to related parties. The development of cooperation will also take place at the sketch project stage. It is indeed happening. Yes, it is already underway, but it is not final yet. It should undoubtedly be formed by the CAT according to RKD. And at the RKD stage, everyone should already be working together for, in order to be able to successfully and efficiently manufacture over the course of a year as. We absolutely expect the device Nova in any case, as it were, there to roll out some additional ground-based, but also flight-related, the testing is according to the decision of the Scientific and Technical Council, so it's happening in parallel. We have essentially, so to speak, created within the company NOVA. The engineering center, which has been specifically designated to implement these tasks, has been officially established. This center is now operational and equipped with the necessary... Currently, the head of the center is Fedor. Two deputies, including myself and Vadim Vasilievich Zubkovich, who spoke. I am involved in the organizational part. Zubkovich is focused on technical side. At this current stage, it is currently intended that this, like a technical engineering center, this is, in many different ways, a significant harbinger. The design bureau that is supposed to emerge, but for now we are still at the design bureau. We were not ready yet. And at first we decided to create an engineering center, but nevertheless indeed in it. Six departments have already been officially approved and will be established in total. 
This is a prototype design bureau. This is the first department, the department of general views and shells. This is the design department where the development of ideas and key technologies, main concepts, In this department, the following is the computational theoretical. The department clearly focuses on aerodynamics and strength dynamics, loads and any calculations of aerostatics that the following design departments, such as, must be appropriately and satisfactorily fulfilled. The department of the actual design of the units, that is, this is the development of all the components of the shell and frame of the air gas equipment, such as elements of the power system and other components. Installations, gondola elements and other if necessary. Something will be given to the adjacent parties, but we will develop something ourselves. The next department is the onboard equipment department. This is the development of pilot navigational equipment, radio communication and general electrical equipment. So this is such a department. The ground equipment department is the entirely comprehensive and complete ground support infrastructure system for the massive and the certification technical documentation department and associated management functions. That is, we will need to produce a comprehensive flight operation manual. Operating manuals such as passports, forms, norm control archive certification issues this department. This is the structure that has been currently defined at the moment as it stands at this point in time. Little, little she. We are literally hiring people, so to speak. Someone for a permanent job, someone for part time, or perhaps even someone for a temporary or seasonal position. Someone will be it's currently a process of outsourcing at the moment. The organizations of the design bureau, along with the process of developing requirements for the device, well, one could say that it is already at a certain level. But closer to approximately 10 people are already with us. We are collaborating with this, well, it's not exactly in a certain respect, someone or entity, perhaps. In the state, someone is collaborating, well, actually, he works somewhere like that. We have someone working with us part-time, which means this is generally... We need to equip ourselves as we are planning to create a design bureau. And why is it important? Because after all, it should be specialists in almost all various different areas. And because in order to... In order to obtain a type certificate for the device, there must be a division. Well, the design bureau, the entire enterprise Nova should receive it. Certificate of Aviation Technology Developer, and everything should be closed there. Directions, that is, these are, for example, design-related. We have shells, which means designers for the shells. Designers for equipment, piloting, and navigation. Calculators, aerodynamics, dynamics, such as load testers. Well, in general, the entire spectrum in its entirety as a whole that allows for to calculate, to create, to design, and innovate. And then we will get to manufacturing. To indeed manufacture and test this are already the next stages, that is. This is indeed how we envision such development. Well, I actually just won't. We have approximately preliminarily. There are a number of people, but at this stage it's a small amount. There are approximately two, three or so, at most four people in each department. Somewhere in the Department of General Views and Shells he is. We already have four people now at this moment. Well, because this is the development of a concept, a direction. We are specifically working with the shell material. In our conditions, it is absolutely not so very easy to find it. But let's see who the manufacturer is, where, how and what can be selected. This is, let's say, something like this. Post on the structure regarding organizational challenges and issues, plus equipping, enhancing, and optimizing the workplaces. The place is an ongoing process that is indeed, well, you know, actually, in a sense, you were showing the work. The places, that is, this process is also ongoing in parallel. By the way, the laboratory is also being moreover equipped. I think we will very soon show some footage from there as well. Many jobs have already appeared in general, yes life. Slowly it starts to feel like a cyber lift in the office, damn it, or a peak. Tell me a little bit more about the device and also about the scientific and technical counsel in detail. What exactly is its main goal? Ultimately, the main objective is to approve the idea, to approve it. As a vector of development, it's important to proceed gradually and step by step. 
In our detailed analysis so far, we have successfully adopted two points from the previous one and have meticulously and comprehensively examined them. Yes, it is currently to develop a list and formulate technical requirements at this moment. We have already carefully and meticulously developed the list in a very comprehensive manner, and I can say, what we essentially want from this device, Nova, is basically... Well, first of all, it is a very small device. Yes, the volume is approximately from 2 to 2.5 thousand cubic meters or so, in this range most likely closer to 2. What is the reason for this? We really want this device, the airship, did not exceed approximately 12 meters in height. This really allows him to be quite standard. Aviation hangars simply pass through the gates. We can in to conduct assembly, gas filling for the process. And practically almost just about anywhere there is an airport that provides service for both commercial and private aircraft. And in general, this is a standard size to proceed to testing, to proceed to flights, and perhaps even apply it later. That is to say, this is one of our main basic requirements. To avoid creating, to avoid building somewhere, new hangars like at this stage, based on this, what are the requirements for this device? This is such a volume. We hope that it will have a carrying capacity of up to 500 kil, and potentially more, and the flight range is at least 500 kilo. device measures 500 by 500. But this is indeed the lifting capacity, I am actually here. I am indeed saying this is for the unmanned vehicle. So. What we are planning on this. What do we want to work out in the apparatus? First of all, this device must definitely be, well, several or so three directions as a result of the modifications. The first is a manned vehicle, such as a spacecraft or a rover, which in the future that is designed to carry astronaut and equipment can become a sightseeing and tourist vehicle with a number of seats. Six, that is one pilot and five passengers. This is how we would like to plan. We hope that such a device indeed is. It will be necessary to certify and obtain a certificate. Like if we definitely want to fly with passengers on board. Yes, it can be. And in the VP class, it generally means there will be fewer people. Or let's say perhaps a regular tourist excursion. Its flight duration is small, but quite sufficient. We are planning around 2 o'clock. So it's like this. The commercial variant of using this advanced developing apparatus and system. We hope that it will be commercially successful in... Depending exactly on the price at which we manufacture it and precisely. Next, as you can clearly and easily observe, this is still our demonstrator device. And we ultimately want him to absolutely do it. Its piloted version is currently unmanned and work on. The unmanned flight scheme of the airship that is autonomously controlled and monitored by advanced system. This is the takeoff, flight and landing of an unmanned airship. But this is not the first year because of that. That creating an unmanned airship is more difficult than a manned one. It is absolutely essential to understand that the pilot indeed takes on a wide variety of many different automatic functions. The control system needs to be refined and we started working on it with the pilot. We will definitely set it later. It will be without this afterwards. On this same device, we would like to in the autonomous and unmanned version can autonomously practice cargo unloading and landing, which is efficiently mechanized. It may even be possible to automate it, but hardly on such a small device. But nevertheless, we are at least let's indeed see how this is possible. In addition to this, we would really like to we will simply do this on this device and we will call it so docking with a minimal amount of to manage without ground personnel or even without this personnel at all. That is, it is available in both manned and I am currently reading about more details about the process of working this out in the unmanned version. We want to demonstrate the first point of the implementation of the Scientific and Technical Council. The requirement is as follows. We want it on this. To assess the maneuverability at low speeds because well and to ensure a comprehensive and detailed analysis of the performance under various conditions let's say indeed we plan to install on this device the analogy is roughly like this with the zeppelin of the maneuvering device only 
in the horizontal plane, not the vertical one. And thus, we'll just simply take a look. This is autonomous docking, including maneuverability at, at very low speeds indeed, because the airship has rudders. Aerodynamic, which are mounted on stabilizers, and they efficiently at, are poorly effective at low speeds. Effective, and here it is necessary to manage in general some aspects. With other devices, if we simply want to do without a crew, so that she wouldn't run after him, he still managed to please her. At low speeds, it should be suitable. It cannot land at a very high speed. Otherwise, it generally does not work effectively. The airplane will lose all advantages. It must land at the designated point. This is a very serious problem. Seriously, we really want to work on it. This apparatus, both in manned and unmanned versions, are available in various configurations. The same applies to the technology, the movement of the airship across the platform, that is, so that it is not carried by a relatively large number of people, including the non-tethered ground handling technology, including the standards prescribed at 35 meters in, wait a second, that is hurricane force wind. The device should generally be maintained properly to carry people on the ground without having a hangar and the third, well, you know, that's already something else. We set the task for ourselves that this is indeed specifically part of the aggregate components in particular. We will implement the air gas system using advanced adaptive technologies. 3D printing, we are currently already launching this as well. These are the various technologies that we want to develop and innovate on. In this device, he has exactly passed the MTS. What is it all about? Further steps in order to make it clear to the viewers what is clearly happening. What path does it take to reach the airships at this moment? One interest that we made further into what it will be. What specific interests will be formed and what documents will be created. The tasks have been outlined in general terms, but here is... Step by step, once again, well done, Pavel, but... The situation here is that the Scientific and Technical Council, NTS, is not always mandatory. Well, let's say... The Scientific and Technical Council in Russia conducts assessments based on the results of this entire work, usually at the Scientific and Technical Council, NTS, some technical proposals, discounts. The project, well, it's something like scientific research work in its entirety. We didn't have stages. It was more like a continuous process for us. The electronic device was indeed certainly without such a state standard stage, right? But since we have gathered a diverse group of people in... In general, such highly experienced specialists and experts in the field of airship construction, but everyone, even if they work together before in one, to the team, but everyone has their own vision. At first, we gathered and listened to everything. Is this the vision of each of the people, right? Then we ultimately decided that this is indeed what we are finally leaving here, and technologies? We will decide which ones to leave for later. We are not considering the future right now. Well, that's not possible. To combine everything all at once simultaneously in order to effectively the tempo and the apparatus mean the next stage for us will be to develop in order to we are somewhat reviewing and approving the technical requirements for this we want to hold the scientific and technical council again why the scientific and technical council well you could say it's a technical meeting of people which still allows the development team to get accustomed to each other in a manner that is both gradual over time and effective, allowing for a seamless transition. Manufacturers and partners that we invite, we are inviting to the Scientific and Technical Council, NTS, not, not only the employees of NOVA, but also individual specialists who are planning to collaborate with us or are already collaborating, but are not exactly employees. But who is specifically, can you please tell us in this case, Maybe we shouldn't talk about anyone, Fedor says. It is necessary, it is not necessary, it is not necessary. It is possible to talk about someone already. I honestly don't need to. Speaking, to be completely honest, he absolutely did not even know everything. Not for this reason at all, in any conceivable way. It is important to exchange understanding, yes, there is something we have there. The specialists in the propulsion system are extremely serious indeed, as I understand. From questions and conversation. But for now they have just turned on, that is. People are still around, and not all of them in general comprehend ballooning. Well, a specialist from aviation has arrived. He was involved with autogyros. For helicopters, he does not understand what they are. Well, he so understands we all do. Approximately, if the technical specialists, we understand something. 
but not the details. And here, being present at the scientific and technical councils, a person well like, it turns out he learns more than his limited and confined circle and experiences. Because, of course, we can discuss in, in a narrow circle, then make a decision, everyone basically assign the task and let everyone do it. But we have slightly taken this path and more. Well, let's say it's democratic or similar. At this stage, it may not always be the case, certainly. Okay, but at this stage, yes, certainly, it's good. Then we make a decision, and the distribution of calculations should already be done. To be excluded, one must follow the adopted decisions. So after we approve, you know, actually, we came to the conclusion that it is necessary to approve technical requirements and detailed specifications to make it clear what we want. And there was no confusion or disorder. Everything was clearly defined. The next stage is the actual process of development of the sketch of the project. That is, this is the preliminary documentation. In this particular scenario, it is crucial to understand that here, more than just the entire concept is being meticulously and thoroughly developed. There are already various separate systems, different components and units there. But without working design in the sketch version, and it is being practiced as we speak, what we will do ourselves and what we will hand over for cooperation. When will the development of the sketch project for the next generation airships take place? We will accept him and after that it will already begin to be more. This is a detailed release of working designs for the documentation. It is already possible to manufacture and the same should apply to our... It is also necessary to produce snow machines and only then proceed with the manufacturing, testing, and simultaneously, and within these stages we will be essentially work out and furthermore elaborate further on our unique and individual concepts and ideas regarding various models, and models such as in computer modeling. In particular right now we, they have already in fact started developing a simulator. As of today they have literally just actually started developing this too to successfully and efficiently work out these dynamic issues of takeoff and landing on, specifically for the computer and other related technologies for our device that we are currently using for now in our current configuration. This will be created, and then the aerodynamics will be clarified, in order to elucidate the mass inertia characteristics of the power plant. All of this will indeed be filled by this simulator. It will be closer, closer, closer. So, I mean, it's like a toy, right? There will initially be pedals, steering wheels and all of that, along with a screen. That is, literally, someone sits down and can indeed control it. Then on such things, it is possible to practice failure situations. That is, a refusal there, well, for example, of something there. The wheels on the steering machine failed. What leads to this? Well, perhaps it is to practice at the beginning on the conductor because it leads to the negative consequences of turning something off at the beginning are being worked out. At this particular modeling stand, could you please provide us with some detailed information regarding the contractors involved in this project, by the way? And you also mentioned the contractors. What do you think? Where we will definitely do this ourselves with our own... with the efforts of their specialists there on their own equipment and what... It's better to outsource if I find it difficult to understand certain areas or complex areas. It is difficult to say at this stage what the dependencies are, but... The manufacturing of certain individual parts indeed, such as for instance in particular, not all of them. We certainly probably won't be able to handle the turning and milling work. Let's not at this moment, I don't completely understand the gondola's hull yet. Will we handle it ourselves or can we delegate it to someone else? Well, probably the piloting and navigation group for us, you know, the team responsible for guiding, steering, and ensuring safe, effective, efficient, and reliable travel. It's definitely better to work on the power plant, as I understand it. It seems we definitely want to do it ourselves, that is, here. We have specialists, and we will handle this ourselves, so what? The shell is not entirely clear at this point in time. Maybe we will. We will handle the design ourselves but the manufacturing will be done by others. But it is exactly dependent on what the material is here. In the end, we will choose how most likely this is. 
welding with high frequency currents will be but both equipment means Buyers, we will get in touch with someone, or reach out to a representative, that is, most likely iron metal, and to our dedicated team of expert buyers. We will most likely certainly give away many parts, but not all. The side and everything else is a general assembly, I absolutely believe it is. Of course, we certainly need to have careful assembly, guidance, and testing. Well, we might also be likely or perhaps attracting specialists. The bead is naturally made of pine meaning this is the development of individual components. We will examine the components in detail, and maybe we will also hand over the electrical system to develop the power supply system of the device that is for now at currently in progress and ongoing. We as specialists, well indeed in general, we are not here. We plan to recruit, but in general, as is often the case, everything depends on that. Whom else we will invite and how we will see it positively, or perhaps consider. In each direction, here are all these departments, although one or two people should be, well, perhaps even if... For example, we outsource the development and manufacturing, such as... The contractor and the performer should both be with us, as they are the relevant and important members to our team. A person is indeed more beneficial than two who understand this. They thoroughly check the controls and ensure everything is in place because in the end we want to, to obtain a high quality and good system within a certain time frame. Another, and unfortunately, this experience is indeed somewhat without control. The study indicates that just giving money to cover expenses is not enough. This method doesn't solve the root problems. A broader approach is needed including so you see as you can clearly see we have carefully and meticulously prepared the documentation and then indeed and I understand I must use my own strength to achieve. The contractors have produced what it looks like, that is, here we are. We receive one device before income and take it out a few times. It is physically there from the hangar because it is on. Do we send for certification or do we first try to launch and fly it? Well, here the question is, I think, specifically about this particular device indeed. There will be something going on in parallel that cannot be checked. Therefore, what is the point? Only those devices that we specifically want, and indeed precisely those that we exactly need, are subject to certification in particular, so that we can comfortably transport people, tourists. This is mandatory certification. If the certification does not simply pass, then it may be an experimental device which is currently being tested and is undergoing further evaluation. Then certification is not needed here, but he... Suitable for experiments, but definitely not can safely perform aviation work. That is as a matter of fact, but since we are saying that this, the device we actually have is not classical in the sense that it's just that we are making an airship for flights. We, we say that this is indeed our prototype demonstrator airship. So we can demonstrate as an example, right here at the testing grounds themselves. Without certification or any other necessary and important paperwork, that means we can move. And if we look at it, we in fact have a good option. Maybe we will create a second version, a prototype of the device. And we will absolutely take it to certification, because there are their own types of tests. It needs to be proven, so to speak, the safety of its flights with people. Well, I mean, we naturally, of course, consider any of these devices as well as Starting it, we will be laying down all the absolutely necessary, critical, indispensable, and vital standards that are required during the development for certification. There are such norms I mentioned in the past. This is an airship, which is currently considered of normal category certification level. This vehicle can seat up to nine passengers, including options for unmanned operation, offering flexibility and adaptability for various uses. We certainly have norms that exist in this category. We can as well, and they are accepted in the Russian Federation. We can move forward in this direction. In any case, they must absolutely satisfy them indeed, and then we will see. And indeed, the task is to launch the first demonstrator. Yes, this one. Its main goal is to refine the technologies until they are fully developed. A variety of various solutions along with some commercialization. But not only. He has one more very important goal. Indeed it is. 
let's say organizational, that is, we simply need to create it. The team is capable of creating the next operation on the unmanned aerial vehicles. We need to, well, generally find a suitable, comfortable and conducive place to work in order to, you know, locate it. People and so on, yes, certainly it won't be that much. How much is needed for subsequent unmanned aerial vehicles, but at least the core must be, this is also absolutely crucial, undoubtedly essential and very, very, very important for people. Those who came indeed understand that it is one thing when a person designs on paper and a completely different matter when he sees it. The apparatus in the air, and we will certainly, indeed, undoubtedly, absolutely, definitely comprehend something there. Because on paper, you can simply calculate, for example, well, like I have, we went through that experience, and then we assembled everything ourselves. Here is a simple example. Some devices, such as, for instance, an M3 bolt. Yes, indeed, it passes all the strength tests, but somewhere it... It's so difficult to really set it with a key that you just do it once and you carefully tear it, gently break it, slowly cut it, and then pull it out from there. It's indeed a whole matter there, especially if it's close to the shell, to avoid damaging it, and then after that you accept it. The decision not to definitely install M3 somewhere in some, because it can simply be done, he goes through everything. Light is fine but it's just inconvenient to work with him. Yes, there is a risk of cutting it. Well, or some other things like where it is indeed very difficult to install something. That is, people need to feel it and go through the cycle. After that, they will already be trained and will learn to do something. Designers included. This is also very important. These are also interesting questions. We constantly talk about the fact that unmanned aerial vehicles are planned. I know whether you can answer now or not, but if there is an understanding of who to work with this unmanned aerial vehicle system, so will these possibly be some Russian companies as contractors? They're highly skilled and knowledgeable specialists who will be doing the software for this in the domain of software development. We are talking about the control system, specifically that it is for unmanned aerial vehicles. Yes. The fact that it is unmanned is not the only aspect, it is also. On one side there are the brains, and on the other side the executors. Some kind of authorities, yes. Well, in general the brains, in my opinion, are quite... In this state I can, for example, just name exactly one company that is capable of performing such, generally speaking, in general, amount of work that needs to be done. One additional aspect to consider is that the equipment available in this location is, without a doubt, quite advanced and sophisticated, or at the very least, it is likely to be so. It would definitely probably be better to use imported ones, but we will see. While you were talking about what we have now, the Engineering Center is indeed a prototype of the Design Bureau. This is where she will later retrieve the Design Bureau. Can you tell me what the engineering center is like now? Presents, yes, and if it were indeed at home, it presents when... This will become a full-fledged design bureau with various departments. There are tasks ahead of him, but at this moment, I have just listed them. There is basically a prototype there, and they can move forward from that. To separate, to share, and where to separate more, yes, but in order to effectively and efficiently manage resources, yes, but in... Well, in essence, fundamentally, the structure will remain the same. That is, in essence, there should be a design bureau. Well, this is our Department of General Views and Shells. Now we have named it for aviation. Usually there is a project department there, which is a Department of General Views. Well, we added shells. This is the specificity of apparatus. These are the ones who are developing the concept of the Nova Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. Next, for example, our current Nova 2. And next we named the Calculation and Theoretical Department and Further Research. Of course, over time it should slowly, naturally and gradually and eventually break down into maybe five departments, maybe four departments. That is, there should be aerodynamics, dynamics, loaders, strength specialists those who work with the air gas system. That is, these are aerostatics calculations, thermal physics, calculations, that is, there are quite a lot of them, various calculations and computations, and at the time when there will be many designs, 
It has long been the case that the same things also exist. Accordingly, to meet all the needs, requirements, expectations, and aspirations of the designers here and of the project, these same calculations must indeed also be carried out. And how such a word is currently used in language, validated for, in order to obtain the necessary type certificate. There, too, the type certificate is absolutely the first priority as well. It receives not an apparatus or a dirigible, but a type certificate. On the design documentation, and the design documentation must absolutely be confirmed on one side, specifically an experimental sample, that is a flying airship, which it is made according to this documentation, and here it is, absolutely meets the necessary requirements. That is, the documentation itself is correct, so, yes, he confirms this with experiments and flights. And besides that, all of this still needs to be confirmed. Not everything can be verified. In flight, it is clearly evident that some things, things must be tested on the stands. Well, for example, there are some ranges, perhaps, temperatures, ranges of something else. We will not be in the airship in to place in a pressure chamber or in a thermal chamber, well, that's absolutely unnecessary. And the individual ones that are in particular most susceptible to this. Various components and different types of parts will be placed there and thoroughly tested very carefully and thoroughly. Accordingly, there will also be, in essence, a calculated theoretical. There must be a justification for this. In addition, the assembly design department, it also as well must expand, that is, the design part. Depending on what we will be, we are certainly indeed unlikely to develop everything ourselves. We will develop things, we will hand over others. Co-executive, including not, not only manufacturing, but also development. And then this part will just be transferred to them. In addition, well, the units, well, they are from the same series. So what else is there? The onboard equipment is the same. Not everything is worth developing for us. We can take from someone, but there is no ready-made piloting. There be radio communication equipment. Ready, of course, we do not. We will definitely develop the radio stations ourselves. And the piloting navigation equipment, it is in any. The case must be adapted to the specific unmanned aerial vehicle under our airship with our very detailed specifications. So it is either someone else or us, and certainly very... Maybe we will hand it over to the mixers. Well, the ground equipment department is also here. Most, well, some. We will probably either keep the special items ourselves or give them away. But it is likely that we will give up almost everything here. The only thing needed is specialists to... So that they issue technical assignments to the co-executors because there will be a lot here, mainly purchased primarily while the rest will require development. Well, we have all the technical documentation and certification. This is our documentation, the manual, various passports. This is clear to us. They should provide us with certification. No one else will do it for us. It won't be done. There may be some other departments that will appear. Basically, let's say the structure is approximately like this, by the way, I will take a look. People are already actively asking questions regarding the certificate. What else is there to ask if possibly any safety tests are indeed needed? Are there any specific state standards or guidelines that need to be met for this? So, I don't really understand the safety tests at all. Certification, if we are talking about a type certificate, is everything aimed at ensuring safety this will be introduced accordingly the standards have been officially adopted and can be easily accessible and found on the website specifically in the department of rosaviazia to thoroughly go in and take a detailed and comprehensive inspection and look at this and there is this document like that was accepted at one time by the aviation registry of the max in the year 96, that is in 996, according to analogies with American standards and also American design criteria, such as, for instance, and in particular especially, FAA, which have also been adopted, that is, not aviation rules, but very close to them. That is, there are approximately necessary requirements 
for a thousand. Concerning everything regarding all main and non-main aspects and so on, in general to everyone, generally speaking, designing how to write a manual, how... I don't really know exactly what is actually there with all the units. Air supply, safety valves, power plant to the batteries and other related components. Then there is to everything that can possibly be established. Almost everything is there. Requirements for all, for all, for all. Indeed, we are viewers. For now, I am asking Boris Alexandrovich questions, but remember that you, you can also do this. Yes, you can literally ask us. You can certainly and confidently ask your questions on YouTube or vContact. And now I will just be reading out the questions. So don't forget about them. This also includes likes and reposts. In general, that's everything. As is often the case in surveys like this, how would you describe your overall level of satisfaction with all the aspects and experiences you have encountered? During the past NTS, we undoubtedly and successfully achieved the tasks that, let's say, you... Internally, this may have been the first interest set before us. It's just a rough estimate. It's clear that, in general, there might have been some desires. We could have certainly advanced further, but on the other hand, if we don't proceed, indeed, we potentially risk missing significant and important opportunities. Do not rush too much because anything at this stage, or at any point, or even later, or even in the future, an incorrectly made decision may lead to us. In general, it will have to be corrected. And this is definitely already more developed, I already... I'm not talking about the hardware. It's all about deadlines and money. For now, it's just a little bit better, let's say a little bit more better overall, generally speaking, to equip for a hike in the mountains. Oh, fine. Instead of running headlong and then thinking about what happened to your leg, frostbitten or perhaps something else, and to go back or to amputate there, she will have to either get dressed, that is perhaps while we are indeed, let's say, in fact indeed perhaps, well, we have made some initial progress, but we haven't fully begun the process yet. There's still a lot more to do before we can say we've truly started. At a low start initially, but did not gain full speed, that is, we are currently indeed in a way gathering strength, and that's it. When we likely, probably at the end of the month, we will already be, we are, to be honest, in a sense, to a certain extent, starting quite actively now, well, yes, you know, it's like this, you know. The first step is the most important, and it seems we have successfully completed it. They did it, and in general, as a result, you could notice this. Here is also one of the questions. What will the appearance of the airship be like? It looks indeed quite standard, but later on we will say that it is standard. We plan to create a device that is close to these standards that we are discussing, I said this unmanned aerial vehicle should be close to static equilibrium. The device will always be indeed very heavy, which is quite important for such an incredibly small one, as you can imagine, of the apparatus and the unmanned aerial vehicle variant. Otherwise, we may simply not have it. Not to plant. Indeed, people will be needed to weld. That is, he must. To be transitioned smoothly at all stages of flight during landing, including the overall appearance, such as Let's call it that. The cigar-shaped classic appearance may indeed have a slightly clever design, but... We will also consider the question about some new technologies, innovations, developments, and emerging trends will be implemented, or the first device will be, so to speak, classical. There absolutely won't be anything super new or experimental there at all. Well, I mean, I've basically said a lot in principle about what it means. New technologies, what it will be. A plate. It will not be what it is. There will be no classical form either because as a matter of fact everything, it doesn't actually really make sense to do it for an even comparatively small one. Well, what else? There won't be a rigid body either because then it won't. will take off completely. It is also quite defined by its small size. Therefore we want him not to... Just some additional technologies were being tested but so that this it was indeed a very highly anticipated and expected to be quite a commercially successful and promising project. And what if we lay it out like this? That it will lift in total approximately only about 50 kilograms or thereabout. The pilot's pleasure and all of this indeed somehow seems pointless. 
Discussing questions related to assistance and certification processes is often perceived as uninteresting. However, it is crucial to understand the various aspects and implications involved in such discussions to appreciate their importance and relevance. Permissions can be on a contract basis, but control is always necessary. It won't be possible here at the main enterprise, of course, at this particular moment in time, in any conceivable manner or method whatsoever, without exception. Help is needed, but you understand that certification authorities will be involved. To work with developers, yes, it is indeed possible to attract and collaborate effectively with them, ensuring a productive partnership. It is possible to involve experts. They can do something. Can, in the final analysis, in the end, the documents should come from that. Who wants to obtain a certificate? Are there any foreign analogues? having the required characteristics of the airship. I understand this is the first one, right? No, in my opinion, I strongly believe that I think not. And with respect to the various different types of contractors and their roles as well. Will there be Russian contractors or foreign ones? For now, it's Russian. In general terms, as a whole, we take into consideration everyone, which means consecutively if, in our analysis, these are certain developers of something. But it is challenging for us to reach out to foreigners if these are suppliers of some ready-made products that will need to be modified for us. Yes, indeed, certainly this will also include foreign ones. Well, including Chinese ones, there were others here too as well, from various places, from different regions. The question regarding the shell materials is known for precisely how many years now, indeed. The materials will be specifically and carefully made with us right here and now. In the process of searching for who can indeed actually develop this, it is approximately quite clear what it is. Well, it's clear that this will be a film material in the composition. We are currently looking at polyurethane films as the base material, but... If put simply, in its simplest form, it's either nylon or lapsha, which is a power type, part and films on both sides at least minimum requirements and additional specifications. There can definitely be two sides and more films will be, this is more likely. Overall, they allow for certain boiling currents, but this is only in. We are currently carefully and thoroughly considering, evaluating and exploring other possible options besides welding. And if they certainly indeed suit us, including very well, absolutely. In terms of performance according to modern standards, because there are materials that only, they really stick, but in my opinion I wouldn't use them. Well, what is this? 20 is the last century, but it's complicated here. It is possible to ensure, but it is difficult to guarantee the quality of the adhesive seam. Yes, it is possible. Of course, the first unmanned aerial vehicles were adhesive, but that's just how it is. Well, you know, it's not exactly a miss, but it's not really industrial either, you know, right? This is manual work, but I want to move away from manual work. I used to apply blurry glue myself back in the day in the 90s, that's why. This is not the most pleasant activity, the matter is not even in that. It is unpleasant, and we need to strive for automated production. Therefore, it is necessary to use modern methods of joining materials, namely welding or thermal or ultrasonic, but most likely in high frequency current. We are currently in the process of currently searching. In general, are there any possibilities available now? Are foreign materials or perhaps exactly Russian ones planned to be used? Available. Well, of course, not American ones. Unfortunately, indeed, they are subject to sanctions. Most likely, but the Chinese ones are available. Well, maybe right here, like, the material is in fact a composite material. Therefore, some of its components, for example, the foundation, can be, you can also easily and conveniently buy films from others. It is definitely possible to roll out with us. We have in together equipment of the Russian Federation that allows for general assembly. This pie is absolutely one whole, entirely dear friends, just in case. So I am reading questions from Vicontacta broadcast on, on YouTube on the channel of Next Generation Airships. Let's look at the questions on the Solar Group channel. You can go there too. Write if you want your question to be asked.
Here's a question from V Contactor. But can Nova 2 perhaps become a prototype? Yachts with a carrying capacity of approximately two tons? No, it cannot be because there is no meaning in that. Initially, as the first step probably to create I buy. We need to make approximately two tons first, but maybe not just two. It could be approximately 10 or 20 tons we are talking about. Well, specifically, as you are undoubtedly and clearly aware, Nova 2 can lift that, that it can lift up to approximately 2,000 cubic meters even. That is gas if we consider approximately one cubic meter lifts approximately one. If it is approximately a kilogram, then that is roughly a total of two tons. This includes the design. This includes, well, the fuel is not included because we are removing the fuel. Out of the question, we definitely plan for it to be overweight. But this is indeed also a burden because we agree with this according to the standards. But if we talk about a manned vehicle, then we, they should carry a ball with them that is such that. So how are we planning? We take off with fuel and essential equipment, heavily overloaded with the weight of the fuel, which is planned to be developed, plus a little more. So we are flying, generating fuel. The apparatus is being lightened, is being lightened, is being lightened. At some point, we decided to sit there for a little while longer. Well, for example, all the fuel has been used up except for the remainder. There should be a navigation reserve of approximately 70% or at least 70%. And we sit down. And at that moment of landing, we have been there for a long time. The overload is about 20 to 30 a kilogram so that it can sit down and land very slowly and gently on the ground calmly, not to catch it like the old airships there in the sky. The transition point through neutral buoyancy was consistently and often observed in them during the flight process and the apparatus was already able to land in a lightened state. That is, he continued to produce fuel, advantageous. This allows for taking more fuel and flying further. But then he would sit down and perform a maneuver like would be pressed to the ground by centrifugal force. And at that moment, it needed to be caught by people. If he wasn't caught, then it's clear. It is over lightened. It simply goes up. If someone there, at the same time I held on and did not let go, who else is there? It flies away and then it falls and breaks like that. There were cases in the 1930s. He can certainly do it twice to land, but basically he is essentially like would land with a bit of dynamics like this, but we slightly more dynamics and variation. We do not want to repeat this anymore at all. Such landing options are interesting, and that's why it turns out like this, with additional details. It will land, transition to residential areas, and at the same time, during the process, in general, the flight norms necessitate that it be able to safely and efficiently operate, such as the engines failed, the power unit has malfunctioned. He must transition to stabilize and transition to an aerostatic flight, that is simply fly, and gradually releasing gas to safely land wherever the pilot chooses. It's like a balloon. And until free growth, and for this, it is necessary to have a ballast reserve. Well, because if there is an overload of fuel, for example, there they need to some way get rid of 100 kilograms excess weight. There are two options. The option or to dump fuel, which is not always the case in some situations. It's fine to pour things over people's heads, but in principle, it's acceptable. And an emergency situation or at least part of the fuel is potentially thrown away, for example, but at least to what that we are talking about a weight of 20 to 30 kilograms. He said that exactly 40 should be part of the landing. Some kind of ballast, by the way, it's very interesting. It could be in winter. For example, the so-called water alcohol. Well, let's say, or perhaps, you know, how should I put it? Not a mixture, but this is, as it is known, a well-known 40% aqueous alcoholic solution, commonly referred to as and widely used in various applications. The degree, well, indeed, that is, we are a dirigible at 30. It was in a manner that was in a straightforward manner and without any hassle, convenient to pour the vodka in the glass, but this guarantees it there in the glass. Somewhere down to minus 40, but if it's very frosty to fly. So, just hold on a little bit tighter and consider carefully. The next question is, 
What do you really think might possibly happen? Is there any way to purchase this Nova 2 unmanned aerial vehicle? And if it happens, will it be difficult? Will it be serviced in some private manner? Well, I don't know, like in private? In order, depending on which one we make. Well, yes, like the device, such as a helicopter, an airplane. There, the power unit definitely needs to be serviced, something like that. Well, that's all. Similarly, some training is necessary. A skill must be developed, of course. I not talking. Some kind of aerostatic, yes, indeed, an airship. Besides this, among everything else, this is aviation. This is flying. The apparatus has various aviation equipment and systems that requires appropriate training. People who will service this, but I, we would very much, they wanted these unmanned aerial vehicles to be sold, so there might be potentially additional, necessary, comprehensive, and extensive training as well. Or we were just talking about the school, right? Yes, it asks not about the pilots, but about the unmanned aerial vehicles too. They must obtain a certificate there, as it is necessary for everyone. The same person can just take off and fly in a helicopter, probably. It can fly, but only just once, up to one in total. This is a slide and the peak of something wonderful will definitely not sit down. By the way, when we were at his previous ones, they were on the airship. We flew and interviewed the pilots. He was telling how the aviation has come a long way and there is this translated video. I will send it to you. I just saw it yesterday. And the viewers will absolutely also see you there for 10 minutes. He tells his story about how he manages the airship, quite interesting and simple. Often the project is also asked if it is like a person piloting in its comprehensive execution. To retrain on a dirigible is certainly quite easy, let's say then you... Yes, yes, no, I think it will absolutely be no problem to retrain. Because you know, I had experience like, well... Well, yes, indeed, test pilots, if they are allowed, I don't remember anymore. This procedure... And then he simply sits down and actually flies, yes, indeed, the test pilot. Which before that also, well, of course, he gets acquainted, looks at, understands, but in principle, it is very similar. Oh, well, indeed, even the people who have undoubtedly and certainly flown, well, even those who are just like pilots, moreover, we receive them from both helicopters and airplanes. Yes, indeed, they carried out the landing a little differently, but in principle, both could certainly fly. After receiving clearance, they were shown, in general, as a general rule, this is typically not particularly difficult or challenging. What exactly is the concept of the Nova generation of airships, and how specifically will they differ in detail? Created airships earlier, well, indeed, I understand from the speech about our airships on what are definitely our shores, but now... I would very much like to discuss this as an extremely significant global issue indeed. It takes many hours, and it's complicated here, but how will it be different? But at least here we are within the framework of how. Here we are laying the groundwork for, let's say, the unmanned variant. Yes, undoubtedly, because it seems that all aviation is indeed moving forward unmanned and we want to move towards the autonomous unmanned variant utilizing advanced technology if we talk about transport airships they will probably be different when considering the field of geometry it is simply not possible to create either one not only an aircraft but indeed also an airship but and in general as a matter of fact no car is just one unit that would satisfy the entire range of tasks for example, there is a vehicle such as an automobile. There is a racing car, a business class car, and a bus. There and glory and so on and similar things. It is impossible to combine the same thing anywhere there, yes. There are business class planes, small and compact, sporty and agile, military and powerful. They are different in their own unique, distinct and varied ways. Tasks and large cargo passenger airplanes. The same goes for the airship. Everything depends on the specific and varied tasks that the device is solving. That is, the cargo airship must be completely different. 
I regularly check out questions on YouTube, like this one, by reading through the comments. This helps me understand what viewers are curious about and allows me to engage with the community effectively. By doing so, I stay informed about popular topics and can share my thoughts and responses. Modeling and design will be carried out in some special... It's unclear about the computer program. Or will you understand everything? You will not be drawing on paper anymore. No one does that now. Not a check and find people who can actually draw. Paper no longer taught in institutions. This is indeed very difficult. That is, everything will be. Will be done, typically and usually, in general, on computers or other electronic devices such as tablets or smartphones. The question is, in what environment this... By the way, we are discussing it at the moment now. There are certain nuances, intricacies, complexities and details involved in the current situation in Russia and so on. Well, that we are currently looking at working in various different areas and sectors. So, if there are special programs for the design of airships specifically... Well, I don't know anyone like that. Everyone developed these programs, well, the project, not projects, but essentially project programs, but here it is. In my lifetime, I have developed hundreds of programs, small, cute ones that solve this or that task of the hike, and there, for example, such as their own, while someone else has different ones. If we talk about the designers, they are currently working extremely hard, diligently, and effectively. Nova is either there or in the AutoCAD software package, or... In Russia, this is indeed like in the compass. There are, of course, various design calculation programs and other related fields as well, and aerodynamics can be included. In Auckland, perhaps consider there or other programs well, therefore indeed perhaps that there are a variety of developed solutions for each particular task. Software packages, but they are so general that they need to be Many of them can be modified and adjusted to airship needs in various ways, so to speak. Here is the aerodynamics in the shape of an airship that is, well, I won't go into detail here. There are various models, and so on and so forth, and it needs to be like, I would say this foreign word, validate again. The program, that is, to essentially calculate something already known, to compare something with, to see the results in order to verify that it works correctly. And then it can be... They are inquiring about the servers, specifically asking if these servers will be applied to our form. This question is important as it relates to the functionality of our system. Servers will definitely be used for work, so there will be some... Is there any comprehensive security system, measures, protocols or strategies to prevent industrial espionage? Of course, there will definitely be servers, but we have specifically... A person, specifically an individual, has been hired to take care of this so that everything is properly managed and well organized. So that nothing leaks? Yeah, right. So one, ensuring absolutely nothing leaks. Definitely. Without a doubt. Will the airship be of a rigid structure or a semi-rigid one? The soft structure is soft and delicate and intricate and complex and detailed because it is small in size. Yes, yes indeed, in its nature, that's absolutely right. The transportation of cargo will be significantly equivalent to the cost of air freight or something in between a car and a railway vehicle, but this... What exactly this device or in the near future we, such as, we absolutely want it to be cheaper and on this device, it will undoubtedly be the most expensive because it is indeed a prototype. It's definitely hard to say when we will debug it, but it's not cheap. It will definitely be this way, but on the other hand, if needed, to transport something to a specific destination, well, it's probably better, I think, in a more cost-effective manner. Well, yes, yes, indeed, the process is clear that it will compete. Small devices are generally not compatible with automotive or railway systems. But even more so, one yes, because although on even the first device Fedor was discussed in the last webinar, he mentioned approximately the approximate values of about how much it could cost to manufacture. And still everyone was surprised that it was quite low. The price people have it in their heads. The airship costs billions, but a small device which is not expensive does not. Maybe approximately a billion or so. I'm asking how many there are. 10 or 15 million. For some certain reason, people have specific numbers in their heads regarding dollars, but... This is more essentially about the sales price they are still relying on.
Yes, it is clear that the price of the first device is a matter of concern. Not even the apparatus itself, but the fact that it is, it should undergo a proper test and the volume should be conducted. It is still worth it. That is, well, you know, and then I suppose until the end, you know. Well, this device, we actually literally, we want to test it in various different capacities. That is, it is possible this. We will have one device. Well, we definitely want it to be piloted and without a pilot, with seats, without chairs, as a crucial, indispensable and vital piece of furniture, which I haven't mentioned yet, but it's more than sufficient for our needs. An interesting field that I personally believe may be in high demand and potentially growing. This device is specifically for flights with advertising, including illuminated advertising. The advertisement states that the length of this device will be quite large and respectable. There is approximately 30 meters more and generally speaking in general such a device on in total overall on which there is something written in titanium in the evening or in the twilight and there it sparkles of course I I think it will be absolutely beautiful indeed by the way. I even have a very interesting idea to try to sell advertising. The first airship does not have it yet and thus to buy it exactly at cost as you say about the promotional advertisement was about how airships were marketed sold and flew in great detail in thailand and there it was all covered with all sorts of advertisements there this yes but if you make it so that it can in some cases also be and change but to the computer type that is approximately 10 minutes for example at the stadium the attack during the match such as football or soccer for instance can vary for example advertisement here we are there for approximately 10 minutes or so and one or 10 friend third whoever pays more for something will certainly be more beneficial to me it seems especially at certain special events when it should be well you know perhaps maybe there will be problems with flights in moscow they were allowed earlier they flew in the 90s of the last century now there will be a problem, but there are other cities where, for example, along it, I, I think it will be possible to fly and millions of people will see it. At festivals, at some festival, I know they have become there now. It was very popular in the summer, gathering tens of thousands of people back then. He arrived and there was something about it, well, other cities. For example, million plus cities are also there not Nizhny Novgorod along the Volga. Fly, but advertising is undeniably, absolutely, undoubtedly, definitely one of the very first. And obviously, one of the potential uses is undoubtedly probably tourism in general as well. Yes. And the next point is the development. How will it be like this? The small device is in demand. Well, maybe there is delivery. I need to check, perhaps, for example. It's still indeed difficult for me, but I can say this as a person who indeed rode on the airship, which makes him somewhat smaller. Yes, I understand that this is more about more of that. What we will do, but essentially speaking, fundamentally, there is no difference here. Yes, I can absolutely and clearly imagine how it lands, and you get into it. You go in, and he takes off vertically. I can definitely say I... I am more confident that almost all people who flew on the Zeppelin airship or those passengers who traveled on American airships, they do not pay for a review of the surroundings from above. They pay for the flight on the airship. Definitely. That's exactly why I'm not sure if they are second or third there. Once they come, they might bring their children and acquaintances. I would like to emphasize that, but only to say to myself and to others, and to reiterate the point clearly and concisely, that I flew, I felt this sensation just for that. They will come, yes, yes, well indeed, just when you yourself, likely, you still experience it, you begin to understand that airships are nothing. It's not something like a fairy tale, nor is it something magical in any way. Just an ordinary aircraft landed and you got into it. You flew in? then brought you out and you think, why is it there? It is not possible to launch a scheduled flight similar to the one I had declared. Between cities, for example, that is, it seems to me, an obvious thing. Such as a bus and a completely obvious thing, or perhaps even something else. But let's not... It's hard to talk about it now, but for those who understand, there are many pitfalls. Yes, but it can land just about anywhere. I'll come up with something. I have indeed finally arrived now. There, to Moscow, it's very convenient. There are many reports in Moscow.
So it seems that questions about this are frequently, persistently, consistently, and repeatedly being asked, most likely directly and consistently. One of the most popular questions is, here is the first question for sure. Do modern airships not catch fire? This is the second question regarding wind and everything related to bad weather, such as storms, and so on. This is how the control of the airship is effectively and efficiently managed and resolved in various complex and challenging scenarios. When a strong wind on a very fast wind, and a person asks if maybe some videos showing that he was there, perhaps some big one. The wind in the airship steadily maintained its course as expected, you know, and without any deviation from its intended path, without any issues, but that's all. Building an airship is quite straightforward and easy to understand. The process involves a few simple steps, making it accessible to anyone interested in constructing one. He flies not against the wind. He flies effortlessly and gracefully in the flow, embracing the natural rhythm. He doesn't really care about the wind at all, but only if there are some small vortices, but they are local and there are practically none at altitude. In conclusion, no. Therefore, the question is ultimately not whether it is controlled inside the wind. The question is exactly about its speed within this. The wind was very incredibly higher than the remarkably high and unusually strong speed of the wind. We are setting a speed of 120 for this apparatus, which is quite significant. Cruising speed of approximately 90 kilometers per hour, that is, but... What is this? 90 kilometers per hour is 25 meters. In just a brief moment, well, just ask people if anyone... In life, 25 meters per second is something that many people have encountered. They hadn't actually heard about it on the street, but they met it themselves with us. So, 120 is approximately about 110. Well, how many meters is that per second? 120. Well, it doesn't matter. 120, yes, it's speed. Approximately 120 can carry, and it can also carry about 25 people. Well, I mean, people don't go outside. Why are they maybe talking about this? Like, that is indeed, if we are flying, the wind is there. 15 meters per second, having 25, or even 30 meters. Here we have a difference. We just fly to where we need to. Yes, if we are flying against the wind, we fly longer. But this is unnatural. If we fly with the wind, we go faster. That is, there are no questions here. The wind is more dangerous when stationary on the ground. Here it is as expected turbulence. It simply appears near the ground. And in general, there might potentially be, typically, very strong winds. But this is what we want to work on. But this is also a mooring on the mast. In general, the standards require up to 35 meters. If you stand for a long time, 35 meters is quite enough, or perhaps even slightly more. That is, I don't literally see any takeoff and landing, yes, but, but I don't know of a helicopter that goes 25 meters per second. They also land, and in aviation, existing ones have been flying for a hundred years. Moreover, there are limitations, constraints, and challenges. Everyone has limitations. Ships do not typically perform well in storms. They either leave or hide in bays. Otherwise, in such a way that it will indeed simply throw them onto the shore. All of this is indeed the element. One should treat it with respect and utmost care and consideration. If you think about it, it's of utmost importance. There are natural elements, but for some reason there is a mode of dishes. These questions are given by the wind of Nova helicopter wind. It won't be blown away even if there is a hurricane or a diesel ship. It will not sink if it is not a total loss, if it is stormy. In this particular way, it is certainly not grounded in the air, which is, of course, a well-known fact, as everyone knows, as everyone is aware. These airplanes, known for their remarkable speed, have an incredibly high speed. Well, here you are now, like drones. It's frequently used a lot everywhere. The drone, in fact, doesn't fly very well in strong winds. He turns over, then everything is for him. That is undoubtedly in principle the airship it is. In the air, it is definitely safer in this sense. In the air, like a ship at sea, right? It goes into a storm at sea, there are problems. Well, it's like with ships, yes, because at the border. The weather is calm, the vodka has gone underwater, and everything is peaceful. And as you can clearly observe, of course, here are the boundaries between air and land. Well, as you can clearly see, there are no people here, and ultimately, in the end, there won't be any... Considering the various factors and challenges involved, in your expert opinion, 
How many years do you estimate it will take for us to successfully achieve this? To lift airships with a lifting capacity of 300 tons and in general if... I know how many years it will take to achieve a lifting capacity of 300 tons. Well, certainly one can declare a goal, but for now this goal is very, very, very far away. We need to lift a smaller one for now, well, even within the framework of our... In fact, there is no project with such a task to take such an airship. Yes, I really understand, but I don't think it's economically feasible at all. I often give the example of the largest airplanes, such as the Boeing 747 and other large models, for instance, when discussing how much such devices should generally have a lifting capacity of 300 tons, I think. They need to be there at most, approximately five in size, or perhaps even more, or possibly even larger in the world. And it will not pay for itself. It will not pay. That means very few are needed. That is indeed, if it were to appear tomorrow, then he would probably have paid for himself very well. But to build it, such money needs to be invested. Huge and such forces, and for so long it to build, because this is a very serious time. And indeed, for it to pay off if the state decides so, some tasks will certainly arise that are different. It cannot be resolved. Well, I mean, it absolutely has to appear, and it has to not just appear, it must indeed appear and declare about itself, and for it to be included in the supply logistics chains. Where is it needed? This is when some reactors are being made there, which are adjusted in particular if at the location where it is used there, a whole factory needs to be built for them. If it is certainly transported in parts, but undoubtedly in advance. For example, an enterprise that builds some, or perhaps certain specific, additional specific certain some. Others, such as chemical reactors, nuclear reactors, nuclear power plants, and similar facilities. Or some other incredibly huge and intricate structures, such as massive buildings, but there. The logistics chain is currently being laid out differently. That is, they will not invest in the apparatus because that a facility is being built there that costs billions, if not tens of billions, billions of dollars, and no one will invest in the logistics chain. The device that does not yet exist, which means they are financing it at this very moment. They will not, but someone has to finance it and then wait. To wait? To wait for when this will be applied? Well, I don't know. It's not very difficult, in my personal opinion. I would estimate that there are probably approximately 60 or so here. The term tons refers to a substantial lifting capacity, which means that the equipment or machinery can handle a large amount of weight. This makes it, which in theory should be pursued because everything. If you are carrying 60 tons, you can transport any cargo. That all cargo transportation is now standardized for approximately 60 minutes, at most, in duration. 60 tons are asking about the hangar. What will the first hangar be like? And on which device? On the first device of the hangar, not? It will be, yes, it will not be needed. We will find our own. Since we plan that we pass under any... We will find what exists there, and we will conduct this specifically. But at least that's how I understood it, and then already, at least, depending on further developments, I hope we will decide, well, perhaps not, perhaps, that the upcoming NOVA will take place in a short period of time next. What it will be, and it will already be there, accordingly will be clear, the dimensions, and then it will probably be necessary, if not. Let's find somewhere that builds it, but probably it needs to be done. To build, but not now, indeed, at this moment, now such a task has been built currently, and it will indeed stand empty. Why in general for? I think that people will need the next device. Yes. I see the questions, so the project has responded. We still have more currently additional questions now. There is a second YouTube channel, and I will also check and review the content there. The core produces cardboard fabric and other types of materials. I don't know, most likely for...
or something else entirely, perhaps. Likely meant court fabric, a material used for court-related items, not court's fabric, which implies fabric for various courts. This distinction is key for clear communication for the court, but it is definitely not gas holding. Most likely with. Polyvinyl chloride, known as PVC, is a type of plastic that is often recommended for use in airships. This is because PVC does not hold helium, a gas lighter than air, making it more... Any contacts, assistance with some submissions are very good for us. They will also be involved in the intricate process of designing and constructing various components, including the protective shell, the elongated tail, and the supportive frame of the structure. Partially, we have already talked about this, or from the fabric of films. The materials such as film fabrics serve as the shell for the framework. So, in essence, the frame will either be a frame or most likely, perhaps essentially, in a sense, in a manner of speaking, some kind of composite structure. Composite materials, which are widely and extensively used in various industries for their strength and durability, and partially from aluminum alloys as such, especially, usually some elements are likely made of aluminum, probably the most loaded ones, while the support is made of steel, will be... Well, how is this plumage on the given? The device will be simple, it will be something... A rigid structure covered with fabric, like with some coating. In other words, we will very definitely try to make it as it can be made lighter so that it can still lift as much as possible. All interconnected. They actually talked about this too, but do you still perhaps use it? It's probably a slightly different question, not about the contractors. Do you use the experience of foreign countries? And if so, what kind? Cooperation with him is, in a way that is quite challenging, difficult to say how this experience is to describe fully and accurately. Of course, experience, and, but if experience says that we study, read and learn and watch what others do. In this sense, of course, how can we not look at it naturally in a broader context? And not only airship related, indeed, let's look at my power units. There is something that can be used, but also the airship possibly, in general. We look at what others have created in the field of aeronautical engineering and analyze it. What we consider suitable or appropriate is probably the best that we will also use. A... There was also a question with the specialists or someone. Well, if there is certainly some level of collaboration in general, indeed somewhat, then use it. The experience in us well like this with a hand. So are you perhaps working with someone already or not yet? We do not work this way regarding the use of airships at all. In Russia, what areas do you think are relevant? This is the most attractive. You were talking about advertising, it's clear, about tourism. Is there anything else? There is also cargo transportation services into the northern Far East. Well, perhaps maybe... Well, there might be some other scientific goals, additional objectives and purposes as well. Is this perhaps some kind of detailed, thorough and comprehensive observation of the crop? Or maybe something else entirely? Well, I mean, you know, you see, it's actually more like, in fact, perhaps an observation, you know. Advertising, tourism and cargo transportation are the three aspects. It's challenging to say where any particular device is currently in demand at this moment in time. But for now, we are talking about a small device. It's very clear that this is indeed, in fact, undoubtedly advertising, well, probably, some tourism. And as for cargo transportation, I don't know, we'll see. The version which is unmanned might be quite interesting. Let us carefully examine the very last question. From those that I see so far, like you, definitely. In your expert opinion, what do you think are the potentially significant and complex main technical challenges that the team will face? When developing the first device, an important and significant question is the propeller. This is a power unit for the propeller, that is, we want to so that our propellers rotate efficiently and smoothly. And here there is, in order to ensure optimal performance. Some questions are currently not being addressed due to the short deadlines. This is all definitely solvable, but in general we want this. This year we haven't managed to do everything. Not everything is ready. From ready-made parts, from ready-made parts to the maximum extent. But something will have to be developed separately. We need to find a good engine. 
The engine indeed, unfortunately, is not any foreign engine. In the current situation, it is important to note that we can achieve in the use of well, probably in various scenarios and circumstances as we have observed. This is still the shell material, although there are no particular problems here. But we would like to perhaps even take a look at the Russian one. Well, here with Russia, there may be some problem. Well, you know, that's the power system. And here we want, just like that. I said it's simply to look at the ground. Let's say, for instance, near-Earth ground operation with minimalistic knot. Classical. I don't want to talk about it right now, at this very moment in time, in a bit more detail, but generally, well, like... with a minimal or with a ground crew composition, such as... or completely without it, automatic landing. That is, as a matter of fact, these are the aspects that... It's not that there are issues, concerns, difficulties, or challenges here, but in reality, it's... We need to explore, we need to observe how it will actually work out in practice. And this will be a NOVA step, here it is. They talked about technologies on one side. On the other hand, certainly, this absolutely needs to be considered. Well, as for the unmanned aerial vehicle, I definitely won't. Now, to talk about it, there is a general control system flight, and so on, takeoff landing, it's the same thing. In general, unmanned aerial vehicles are small and fast. I myself personally participated in their development, however, not like this. I am absolutely certain and can confidently affirm that there was absolutely nothing whatsoever that even remotely resembled or was similar to. Approximately 2,000 cubes are relatively small in number, and here is another question to consider. Furthermore, what do you think about this? A rather interesting and undoubtedly quite fascinating, and certainly potentially a dirigible with a nuclear power system. He did not find our everything is absolutely possible. In the Soviet Union, the aircraft was generally considered with a highly efficient nuclear power system. As far as I understand, to my knowledge, there are international, international conventions and regulations that are specifically designed to prohibit this. So why is that then? Here, question why. Because if it really truly falls, how much I... I definitely understand there should be protection there weighs a lot. The reactor weighs little. Well, relatively little, let's say. But the protection that he has there is not adequate or sufficient enough to meet the required standards. I know how much, but in my opinion, it's a lot. You cannot fly without this. Well, why do we specifically need it above our heads? Well, it's not exactly a bomb. But why should we pollute the territory? People are already polluting it in so many different and various numerous ways. We are talking about Green technology in the rapidly evolving field of, and in this context, here we will be over ourselves again. They will all scatter when taken away, but it seems to me that perhaps, it seems to me that then, you know, it would be more advantageous when they invent this, what is it, perhaps nuclear fusion. The reaction in the sense of synthesis will probably be able to achieve cold nuclear fusion then. Why are you choosing to carry it over your head at this moment then? instead of holding it in your hands or placing it somewhere else for convenience. So solar panels are very securely attached to the body, and not just, but solar panels, and very efficiently. Have you ever really looked at just how many sunny days there actually are in the city of Moscow from our elevated height? For which there are a couple of months to add up. That is, 12 nova. For a month it will fly, and for 10 it will stand. Who is interested in this? If it's at high altitudes above the clouds, then probably yes, or in... In Africa, well, maybe there in Israel or in Africa. Where else? In the Arab countries where the sun is abundant, it is probably advantageous. Well, I think that this is generally the case for us. And then, you know, you know that it's all good, of course, but, you know, at the moment there are still solar panel technologies and generally... In terms of energy capabilities, they lag far behind gasoline for now. Not yet. And if we get closer, then it will probably be more profitable. Currently, flying using a battery is possible, but there remains a very noticeable and substantial difference compared to traditional methods. This difference is significant and cannot be overlooked at this stage. In principle, we have answered Boris Lisan's questions. They can be somewhere it is already coming closer to us. Something is falling in some way.
in principle. We can wrap up. Perhaps you would like to add something else. Thank you all for your attention, everyone. Farewell. It's already more than half. After an hour and a half, we are on air. Thank you all very much for today. A lot of questions came in during the broadcast. It felt like it went by quickly. We answered all the questions really well. Thank you very much for that. Your activity, but don't forget, as always, likes, reposts, and comments, and everything. This is welcomed. Send the link to your friends using the same link. There will be a recording of this broadcast, so we will see you at the next webinars. I would like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you. For